This is a fascinating object that I visit every time I'm in Venice. It's kept in the treasury of the Basilica di San Marco and is usually called the Grotto of the Virgin. It's an object that speaks so much to Venice and the way that the city constructed its own identity in the Middle Ages. This object is a composite. That means it's made from three different elements that date from three different periods. The largest part of this object is a piece of carved rock crystal, that is, a very clear quartz, which was a highly prized material in the medieval Mediterranean for its purity. However, we don't know where, or even when, this specific rock crystal comes from. It seems to be carved with architectural details, but what is clear to my eyes is that this was not purpose carved for this piece, meaning that it's been reused. It's rough in some places, and what look like carved columns seem to be upside down. In the center of the object, there's a standing Virgin Mary. She's made of silver and gilt with arms held up. There is a general consensus that this Virgin, even though her halo has a Greek inscription, was made in Venice in the 13th or 14th century, based on stylistic similarities to other Venetian sculpture. And what is now the base was a Byzantine crown, with seven cloisonne enamels of saints and a Byzantine emperor. The emperor is Leo VI, so we know that this piece dates to the 10th century. Although there are spaces for 14 enamels, seven of them are lost. It seems quite certain that they have been rearranged at some point. Now they're all pushed to the front, facing the same direction as the Virgin, so we can't assume that they would have been in the same order. Uh, in fact, it's almost certain that they weren't. Surrounding each enamel, there are beautiful pearls and glass paste, supported on a band that features gilded peacocks, and ringlets at the base suggest in an earlier incarnation there were prependulia, or strings of pearls and gems dangling from the base. The ringlets attached to the peacocks perhaps indicate that the object was suspended as a votive, similar to ones we find elsewhere in the medieval world. The object is really very much like a collage of elements, and in a poetic way reminds me both of something like a Joseph Cornell assemblage, or a barnacled coral reef, but also of the city of Venice itself, an accretion of buildings and material culture collected from all over and installed in this one place. The earliest written mention of this object is in an inventory of 1325, but what's fascinating is that, that we're not exactly sure what its purpose is. One scholar recently has suggested it was an object processed around the city on certain feast days, which I think is probably correct. What I love about this object is the variated surface qualities of the work, which is composed of so many different materials. The shiny, transparent rock crystal, which lets light diffuse through in unexpected ways, the slightly matte yet still lustrous virgin at center, and the delicate interplay of light over the enamels, with the gold lines dancing in between the glass paste. It's quite mesmerizing, and would have been even more so by candlelight in place of the strong artificial lights that illuminate it today. In Pratt and Venice, we always visit the treasury and pause in front of this object, and the conversations that we have change the way that I see it. When I look at it as an art historian, I'm reminded about the scholarly aspects of this work. The, the provenance, so where do the individual spoliated components come from? What is the iconography? And how has the new configuration of the various parts changed its meaning? But in conversation with a diverse group of artists, art historians, and visual thinkers from Pratt, I'm aware that we all have a role in shaping our own identities in the same way that Venice borrowed and adapted from elsewhere and created something completely its own. The projects that many of our participants create while in residence engage with the ideas germane to the Grotto of the Virgin, whether in the form of collage or specific iconography or research into historical materials and techniques in Venice. In this way, this small object serves as a great reference point for Pratt and Venice participants to think about how reuse and adaptation informs our identities and who we are.